In this video, I'm going to show you five and a half electrical tools that are must-haves that all fit conveniently in this little bag. And if you're new to this channel, my name's Josh. The channel's all about building your house, saving a ton of money. So be sure to subscribe, ring that bell so you get a notification every time I release a new video, and hammer that like button for me. That's all I ask in return for making this video. So at any point in this video you want to purchase any of these tools, there's a link to them in the description below. Let's get started. The first tool that I'd like to go over is this non-contact voltage tester. And this is made by Klein, as you can see. And if we take a look at the back, it's good from 50 to 1000 volts, and it only detects AC current and not DC current. So AC current is what runs through your house. And if we pop this back off, this is where the batteries are stored. As you can see, it requires two AAAs in order to power the device. And it came with the batteries, just so you know. And this end will also act as a place to where you can clip it onto your shirt. And in order to power on the device, we just hold the power button down just for a second and release. And the green light indicates that it's powered on. And in order to power the device off, we just hold it down for another split second and it powered it off. Now, if you don't want to hear that noise when you power it on and off, and it also makes that same noise when you're using it, which I'll demonstrate that here in just a moment, you hold this power button down for longer than a split second, for a second or two. And when it turns on, as you can see, it did not make any noise. And when you go to use it, it also will not make any noise. So if you want to use it silently, that's how you do it. And to turn it off, you hold it back down and you turn it off just like you did the first time. So now let's go use this so I can show you how it works. To demonstrate how this tester works, I put together the white neutral wires here and the black hot wires together here. So you'll see the distinct difference here. Now we're gonna power on the tester. And if we place this up against the white neutral, as you can see, it's not beeping or anything. So you would think there was no power to the circuit. But if we go over to the black hot wire, it's beeping very easily and it's on the same circuit as this white wire and that's because this does not detect the power or anything that's in the neutral wire. So you're going to wanna to make sure when you're testing out an outlet or a circuit that you're testing it up against the black wire. And if we touch the ground wire, as you can see, it's not going to detect anything there as well. And something you're gonna to wanna to do before you rely on this tester is go to a wire that you know is hot for instance, this, to make sure your tester is working properly before you use it to rely on turning off an outlet to work on it. As you've probably already noticed, the end of the tester is shaped like the prong of a cord. That's because it'll allow you to slide the end of the tester into a receptacle. And just so you know, if you bump this tester, it's going to show a red light and as if there was voltage. So if you tap it, it's because it's detecting the vibrations. So don't get confused thinking there's power to something all because you just tapped it against something. So we're gonna slide it into this receptacle on this side of it. And as you can see, it's not beeping as if there was no power, but if we slide it into this side and it's going to beep, and this is beeping because this is the hot side of the receptacle. So you wanna make sure that you test both sides of the receptacle before uh, seeing if there's any power in it. If we plug it into the circular part that's for the ground, as you can see, it's not detecting anything. So we know there's power to this receptacle because it's beeping in the hot side of the receptacle. And now if we plug in a cord like this, I wanna show you something that's really critical. If you hold it up to this side, it's beeping. But if we hold it up to this side, it is not. So it's very important that when you're checking to see if there's power to a cord, go around the whole thing. So that way you know if there's power in it. If you're not up against the power, it won't beep. So very important to note about this non-contact tester. I pulled this receptacle out of the wall so you can see this demonstrated on a receptacle. So as you can see, if you touch these silver terminals, there's no beeping. But if we touch the gold terminals where the black wires are located, it's clearly has power. Now, if you're wondering how do you test the switch, it's the same idea. You just touch the terminals with the tester and it will beep if there's power to it. The second must have tool is two tools in one. We got our transmitter and our receiver that's for finding breakers. This is a digital breaker finder and this part will come with it that you can store on the end like this. And what this does is we plug this into an outlet and then we'll take the wand that's on the other side, that's the receiver, and we're gonna find the breaker in the panel box using this device. 
let me show you how it works. Because this is technically two tools in one, this counts as two and three in the list of must have tools. And if we take this end off, the first one I wanna go over is the part that's the transmitter. And this transmitter acts as a GFI outlet tester. And what I mean by that is we're gonna plug this into an outlet and you're gonna get these codes telling you if it's wired correctly or if it's wired wrong, and then we can test the outlet at the same time if it's a GFI. This receptacle is part of the kitchen. This is the island, and it is GFI protected via the breaker. Now this does not require batteries to operate unlike the non-contact voltage tester I just showed you. So all we gotta do with this, we'll slide it right into the receptacle. And this is a chart of any wiring that may be wrong. It's gonna show up and to give you a code to address that issue. But as you can see, this is correctly wired because we got two yellow lights here on the end and that's what's represented on this chart. So because this is a GFI protected circuit, if we press this button, it's gonna short out the circuit. And if this circuit was not GFI protected, if we press this button, it won't do anything and it won't trip it. So if we press it now, it kicked the breaker and it is correctly wired and it is GFI protected. Now this receptacle is not on a GFI and if we plug this in, it gives us our same code as saying correctly wired, but if we press this in, it will not trip the breaker. So that's something to keep in mind if you go to test this on a circuit and it's not tripping the breaker, it's more than likely not a GFI protected circuit. I'm now gonna show you how to use the digital circuit breaker finder. And this is the outlet tester that I was just showing you how to use. And this is the outlet or receptacle that we were just testing. So I'm gonna plug this back into that outlet. Now we're gonna to head to the panel box with the receiver. I just noticed a really crazy phenomenon. Watch the light on this, it's gonna light back up. See that here in person without the camera, if you're looking at it with your own eyes, the light stayed solid the whole time. But right now, while I'm making this video, I noticed on film it looked like it was going off, but right now it is still on in real life. Very weird. Leave a comment below if you've ever noticed such a thing. I'm over here at my breaker box with the receiver, and something to note, it did come with a 9-volt battery and requires a 9-volt battery to power this, and it is inside the handle of the receiver. And in order to turn this on, all we got to do is press this power button on just for a split second, and you see the green light come on and you hear the beeping. That's what it sounds like when it has not detected the circuit yet. And all we gotta do with this, the first thing I like to do is go over each breaker like this. And you see, it's probably that one, but we're gonna go through all of them first. All right, so the only one that it could have been was up here, right there. So you can see it's a red light, it's beeping like crazy, and you notice the beeping speeds up as you get closer. To the breaker. So like I mentioned before, that circuit is GFI protected and the purple test buttons are GFI breakers. So if we kick this, it should have kicked the power to that circuit. And as you can see, it's not detecting anything there. And something to note when you power this back on, it's not going to detect it as easy. So it's recommended that you turn this off, then turn it back on in order to use it again. So if we go up through here, it detects it way better. So always make sure you reset your receiver after you kick the breaker off and on. My number four must have electrical tool is the Klein Catapult Automatic Wire Stripper and Wire Cutter. Let me show you how it works. The thing I love most about these wire strippers is the versatility of them. And right here is where the wire cutter is located. And as you can see, it can take up to a 10 gauge wire. And how this works is around back, there's a hole and all you gotta do is slide your wire right into it. Then it's gonna come out the front here and then you squeeze it and the blade's gonna come out and cut it right in the back where that blade's coming out through the hole. And now we just squeeze. Now for the automatic stripping tool that's located up here on the head, it can strip anywhere from an eight gauge to 20 gauge solid wire and a 10 to 22 gauge stranded wire. And all we gotta do, if you take a look at the numbers here, see that 12, I got a 12 gauge wire right here. And in order to use it, all we gotta do is line up with that 12 and slide it through the back here. So all we gotta do is go somewhere like so, say you wanted to strip that much off of it. We just squeeze real slow. It's gonna pull that sheathing right off. 
and that's all there is to it. And this thing is very precise. Wherever that wire is looped over the end of the edge here, that's where it's going to be cut. So as you can see, we can place and just cut that little bit off with no problem. Another great feature to these, you can buy replacement blades if these ever get worn out. I have used these a good bit and it has held up very well. Definitely good build quality and they may not be suitable for every situation, but for 99% of situations, this thing works great. Number five on the list is a wire twister. This thing is really cool and you're really gonna like what you're about to see. Let me show you how it works. If we take a look at the wire twister up close, as you can see, it has a quarter inch chuck that can fit on an impact driver or a drill. And if you take a look at the opening here, it is slotted. And as you can imagine, it's for the wing of the wire nut to catch on to be tightened down. So if we take a look, even the smallest wire nut like this size will fit down into it and catches on the side very easily. And if you take a look at this number 18 wire nut, it has wings on it. So I've noticed that the wings definitely grip onto this tool better. And it is very simple how this works, but I wanna show you putting wires together here as well. Now, if we take this number 14 wire nut, as you can see, it slides in there very easily and it grips it probably better than the rest of them. So if you notice, the wings are definitely gonna be helpful for using this tool. And now let me show you how to connect wires together using this. In order to place this in a drill, you simply just slide it into the chuck of the drill like you would anything else and then tighten it down and make sure it's in there really well. And now whenever I put together wires using wire nuts, I always twist the wires together using linemen's. So in order to do that, all I do is grab the end here and then twist them together like so, just to make sure they're connected well. And now in order to use this tool, we take our wire nut, slide it into the end on the wire twister, just like so. And now we're gonna place it right over those wires and tighten it down. And as you can see, that tightened it up really easy. Now that's just a cool tool to have if you've got a lot of wire nuts to do. And as you can see, it saves your fingers from having to twist it together like so. And if this was attached to an electrical outlet or something, it would have been easier to see how well that tor torqued it down. So now let's say you wanted to put these together and you didn't want to twist them together first, but I always recommend you do so, but I just wanted to show you how it would work. So we'd slide them all in like so and then we tighten them down. So as you can see, it's more of an exaggerated thing when you don't twist them together first, just so you can see. Now, if we undo it, we'll see the difference between the first method and this one, and it's not twisted together nearly as good as twisting them together like we did first. So I always recommend you use the lineman's first regardless. My final must have tool really isn't necessarily a tool, but I felt like it should be on this list because it is very helpful for DIYers and homeowners. And they are the Wago lever nuts. These babies are extremely useful and easy to use. Let me show you how they work. Whenever I buy these Wagos, I like to buy an assortment of them so you have some available for each situation. As you can see, this is one that's rated for five wires at once, and then it goes clear down to two wires. And also, these are good for 24 to 12 gauge wire, so anything in between, you can use the same nut on, which is very handy. And they're very simple to use. Honestly, they're super easy to use. Anybody can figure these out pretty easily. The good thing about these as well is they can be used on stranded wire or solid wire. So let's take this one that's rated for three wires. And as you can see, all you gotta do is open up the lever like this, and that's gonna allow you to slide a wire inside here and then you has a clear plastic back so you can make sure the wire is placed properly so all we got to do to put a wire in it is take it and slide the wire right into one of those ports right like so and then shut the lever and that's all there is to it if we take a look in the back as you can see we have sheathing up to here and then it goes into this bar to where all the wires connect and then you have a little bit of sticking out right here and in order to place more wires in there all we got to do is slide them right in and shut the lever and so on and so forth as you can see that was almost too easy 
And this is so much easier than using a wire nut that it's ridiculous, to be honest with you. And if we take a look here, if you look at these ports in the back, you can slide a tester in here even after it's connected. And you can also slide a tester in from this side as well, right into that little slot if you wanted to test it, the circuit for whatever reason using the wire nut. And this is very nice because you can undo your wiring much easier than a regular wire nut as well. So let's say we had to add a extra black for a power to a switch or something. All we'd have to do is lift up the levers and you can just pull this right out and boom, you're ready to go. I mean, it's just such a nice device that I had to include it on this list. I know I only counted it as 0.5 of on the list, but it was something I needed to include because it's gonna be very helpful for anybody watching this video to know something like this is out there to use. If you would like to know how I wired this panel box, check out this video, it'll help you out.